Hello there and welcome to my arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter and amongst other things I'm an artist and I'm particularly known for my colouring book art, my whimsical kind of stylized with lots of patterns in and quite abstract art at times as well and um, I'm all, I also was for 28 years a teacher in a secondary school, high school. So I taught pupils up to the age of 18 for some of my career, but mainly up to the age of 16. And um, I was a science teacher, but I discovered I had a kind of talent for art and it led me to the path I'm on now. And see, once you've been a teacher, you can never get rid of that in instinct to teach and help and inspire and share methods and so on with people. It's part of who you are. So before I do any more, thank you so much everybody who's subscribed to my channel, whether you're a new subscriber or one who's been here a bit longer. I appreciate you all very, very much. And thank you for the thumbs up, the lovely comments, the encouragement, and um, also putting up with my slightly sporadic videos over the last couple of weeks while I've been trying to get a book done. I've got six templates left to do and I've got well, until sometime next week to do it. So we're cool. Um, so what do I do today? Do I get straight to work? No, I decide to potch around with stuff. So with no further ado, let's get to it. What you can see in front, this is the sheet that you would have seen some of in my previous video. Um, I know I did another page, but I can't place it at the moment. I suspect it's in my scanner still. And I'm not gonna try and disturb the stuff on the scanner. And I've decided I quite like having strips that go right the way across with a quote on and these backgrounds. And I have completed all of the backgrounds on this one. And you might see I've got gold there. Here I tried some gold. Um, you get this sort of like waxy paste. This is Alchemy Wax from Imagination Crafts. And you just smear it on and it dries pretty permanent. Um, and it's lovely, but I, I think I've really messed up and I've spattered gold and I've added pat subtle patterns and some more ink tents and so on just to try to get ideas for things I could do and to get things done. I need to find another way to apply that gold though other than my finger. Um, I particularly like adding some patterns to some of these papers. I didn't do it here because we've got a bit of pattern. Oh you can't see. Sorry. I've got a bit of pattern here so I didn't do it on this one. But I thought this added something to these large areas of nothing much. Um, so just seeing what happens. So I did some on the top as well of this one just to see what happens. And I've added all the quotes like good enough is good enough. Small steps every day. Willing to believe in myself. Oh, and this is one of mine. My bugbears. Talk as in toxic positivity. You know, it's sort of like telling people to think positive and you'll be fine or think happy thoughts and you'll be happy. It, it doesn't help, it really doesn't. Um, it might, uh, you know, some people, and but it really doesn't address with what's going on inside. Um, so um, yeah, it's an avoidance kind of thing, in my opinion and opinions of others. So toxic positivity doesn't help because that is a, a good one to have. And then underneath of this, I have this huge pile of stuff and these. I'll show you what I did this morning. Hopefully my hand, well, my hands are still a bit grubby. I've still got some paint on them. I remembered that in my stash, I had some um, fresco paints from Paper Artsy. And these are like chalky acrylic paints. that They act as a gesso to surfaces, but they also are coloured. And in the, but I remembered it. I found the box and in the box there were some metallic um, acrylic paints as well. I forgot I had those and I haven't used these for a number of years and I was really surprised that with a good shake some of them were a bit gloopy but they all ran, they all worked. So some are opaque, some are semi-opaque, some are translucent and so I took some of my mixed, pe mixed media paper and I just coloured them with some colours and then um, sort of like this one's got some copper in it. I don't know if it, you can see it catch any light. There is some shimmer in it still. Um, there's quite a few layers of colours here, but they're sort of like purple, soft purple, soft pink, tealy colours and so on. 
Um, this one was the one that was an absolute nightmare for me. I really made a mess. But the lovely thing about fresco paints is because they're opaque, you just carry on layering. And sometimes the more layers you do, the more you get to. It's kind of like an insipid version of Monet's water lilies. Um, and the, the little bits of copper in there were a complete accident. I managed to get my brush or piece of sponge because I was using a bit of the um, cut and dry foam, the black foam I used to spread the paint out. Not my fingers. That, that would be just too, too messy. But um, they're sort of like very matte colours and they're quite subdued. They vary, depends which colour they are, but they are quite flat and, as I say, quite chalky. And I've got this one here. And so I want to do something with them similar to that page you've seen. So I took a piece of the same paper. This is mixed, the mixed media paper that I've been using. It's quite heavyweight and coloured some with distress inks in the hope that they'll sort of like will go with these colours and I think they do. I think I've picked fairly decent colours here to go to actually work with these backgrounds. So I've got those. Okay, moving along. The other papers I've got here are some of the digital papers and ones that I think might make, like this is so pretty, isn't it? It's like out of an oldie worldy book. But I thought that might make a nice border across the page and perhaps with some of that behind just sticking out. And you know, I don't need the whole of it, I could use part of it. Um, so I've got various papers here of different kinds, different colours and, and so on. As you can see, hopefully, there's a whole host of them. There's some of that dotty paper as well. I've got some that's got a this one's got a purplish tint, which is quite nice because it will go quite nicely with, with the ones that have purple on. Something like damask wallpaper, which I like. And then I've got my quotes that I actually did um, do digitally and print out digitally. And we'll see where we go. So let's pick one of these. I think I'm, I quite like this one. But I think I'm also in the mood for a bit of pinky purple. So let's go with, that is very similar to that, isn't it? In color, so perhaps not that sheet to go with that. There's some blues in there, peacock feathers and so on. That could work. This one, that's quite a contrast, isn't it? Too much of a contrast, I think. Let's have a look. Let me have a look at this one because I may go with the green because I was quite drawn to the green to begin with. Not sure those would work. That possibly could. That definitely could because there's some of those tones in there. I think I'll go with those. The others I'll put to one side because I'm creating quite a bit of a stash of weird paper. So I now just want to get a strip of this or perhaps let's start with a quote and build the layers from the top to the bottom. And I'm just looking at what I'd like to use. Do I want, because I've got two different fonts, same same words, different fonts. I Oh, I've actually got three different fonts. Didn't realise that. It shows you how much notice I pay to what I'm doing. Um, I've got all the quotes in the typewriter style font and I've got one in quite bold and one that's in very thin. Um, I've used good enough is good enough because I'm so tempted to do that. Uh, I think be true to yourself would be a nice one. And I think I'll use the bolder version that's here. And I'm just going to cut it out with scissors today. And I'm not going to be fussy about anything to do with how straight the line's with or parallel or anything. I'm quite happy to have it a bit random. There we go. The other thing I'm going to do, I have got one of these tools somewhere that will allow you to scruff up the edge of paper. But I'll just use my blade of my scissors here. You just drag it along the top and it just sort of like scuffs up the edge a bit, roughs it up, um, grungifies it distresses it. So I've got that there. 
and I put my distress inks away, didn't I? But it's no hassle to get them out again. They're almost within arm's reach. Almost. Right, fangs. There we go, got the ones I want. While I'm at it, let me just put the autofocus on. That's what the beep was. Okie dokes, I just want to add some ink around the edge. And I think I'm going to go with, I'll go, I think I'll go with ground espresso, which is um, quite a rich brown. As it says, it's that kind of colour. Got some lovely sunshine from time to time. A really heavy rain when I woke up this morning and on and off overnight. So this is a bit wobbly and wonky. I'm a bit wobbly and wonky at times. A lot of my stuff is wobbly and wonky. Especially when I haven't had that much in the way of sleep. Oh, one of those can go there. I need some glue from over here which is fun, Dabby Dorsey. Okay, now I need to decide on a paper I want to put this on. So if I was to put this on top of this, it would get lost in the pattern. That's quite nice, but I really want something that will kind of go with this colour and with this. So we're looking at these. Nope. I could be heading back to the stash, you know. Let's have a look. Nope. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Where's my little quote? Because I could put some paper underneath that. That would go this way. That would work. And then this underneath would be nice. So that, that's great. But I want something a bit darker perhaps to go underneath this. And that's where I can um, perhaps go with a different kind of paper. I'm looking here for something that's on the darker side. Do you think I've got anything? That would be a very silly question or very silly answer. They're all very light. That one's a purpley, that one's a purpley bluey or grey colour. Nope. Nope, 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 none of them. Have a look. Too similar to the background. Let me just have a look at this one because this one may be. That one might be okay. Especially if perhaps I take some of that area there. That would be quite nice. So I need to make sure this is wide enough. Oh, look at that. It's just wide enough to go across the page. Because I, I don't want... I don't want to have... In fact, I think this could do with being just a bit thinner. So I'll just take a bit off the other side to where the dark, splodgy bits are. And I think that'll work quite nicely. So, oh gosh, oh. why did I put my distress inks by? Can somebody explain to me? I'll put them by. Is it's a it's sort of like Wenglish. If I don't know if other people use it, but when we say put something by, it means put it away. I've put it away. I've put it by. So these little things creep out. And sometimes I realise that I've just said something that people might not have heard. So, but let's put it by, put it by now. That I think might work. Still not too sure. I think there's, I think this is perhaps just a bit samey in colour, but I don't want to put another strip underneath it. So what can I do? I'm eyeing up that gold. Do you know what? That might be a possibility. So let me get that um, scrap paper. I should have a piece in here somewhere. I do. I'm going to get all icky. But, you know, this is the price of craft, art and craft. So this, this gold 
should, if I can get some on my finger, should just be able to give that a bit of gold. Let me have a look and see. Cause, yeah, that'll work, I think. You can still see the pattern underneath, but there's something a bit different about it, which hopefully will let the everything else underneath just shine through. Check that now. I will get to drawing, honestly. I will. So how about that? Does that... I think that looks a bit better. And I quite like using the gold because there is some gold in the on the background paper as well. So I'm just adding just that little bit more gold over the top of that pattern. So I do want to get it right to the ends of the paper if I can. So it's not too patchy and shabby. You know, there's grunge and there's not a proper level of it. Right, that'll do. So where's my lid? It's over there. I've had this for years and years and years. Can't even remember. I, I know where I bought it. It was in a craft shop called Dandelion that wasn't too far from me. And um, I've managed to get stuff there. So that would be quite nice. I'm going to stick this on before I lose this. Get rid of the, the glue there. So it's a funny old day today because I really didn't have enough sleep last night again. I didn't go to sleep until late. There were reasons why. So I now I could pop that on there or I could pop it on a piece of this. You see how shiny that is? And yet, when the light's not catching it, you can still see the pattern underneath. I really like that with my finger. Look at that. It comes off really easily though, luckily. So I think this would look really nice on a piece of this, but I want to get something that's a little bit on the darker side. So I think a strip from here would be good. So, oh, let's tear it nice and tear it again. In some ways I am absolutely gutted that I haven't got um, like these have got this lovely white edge. I haven't got that on this but that's fine I can live with that. Can I live with this as it is? Will that look good on there? I think it will, but I think I could do with it being just a little bit thinner. So let's do some more tearing. This morning as I was coming around, I watched a YouTube video. What a surprise. It's a marvellous place, this YouTube, isn't it? Oh, look, I've got some of the white there. That I think would be quite nice. So I'll, I'll before I stick that down, I'm going to ink round the edge there. Um, do I do that with the brown though? I think so. No, I'm going to dig the greens out and I'm going to use a green for that. So, um, yeah, so I was watching a YouTube video and the YouTube video was somebody showing how they create collage pictures. And it was, I think that's what triggered my memory about the fresco paints and so on, because they created their own paper for collaging using just printer paper and acrylic paints and would cut shapes out and then tear them and to get this white edge in sometimes and sometimes not. And it was just really interesting. And how they managed to create these pictures was fascinating because although I've, I collage, kind of, I don't collage in that way. So I want a nice green that will go with this. I want something that's quite dark. The darkest one here is forest moss and it's a really, I mean, you know, if I take some of it, it's this kind of colour, but it, I don't think it would look good on the edge of that. So 
darkest green I've got. I've got ice spruce, which is a grey green. I don't really want that. So the darkest green I've got otherwise is this one, which is pine needles. And I think that might work OK. So I'm just going to use this just to colour along this torn edge a bit. I could have left it white, actually. But I just sometimes I just think this just finishes it off and it brings out that edge a little bit more um, in some ways helps it to stand out from the background perhaps a little bit more so I'm going along this this edge here as well does that look okay I think that looks okay so let's get to adhering this down so it is just putting some glue on so I'm using this Tombow mono I've got some glue sticks on order because I get in a right state. And I actually did have tweezers here yesterday. They're reverse tweezers. So you squeeze them to open them and then they clamp onto whatever it is you want to hold. And they're great for dealing with little titchy bits of things. But do you, do you think I know where I've put them? I've put them somewhere safe. You know, I was using them. I can't, don't know where I've put them. OK, so my next job now is then to decide... How do I, do I put something underneath this? Let's get rid of that little strip because that won't be of any use to me. So do I want to put something underneath this? Let's try, just have a look at that just to see. I could do that or what I could do is perhaps to take that gold again and just put some gold underneath where these would be. So if I just gently, hopefully draw around that. Yeah, I've got enough pencil out. I'm doing this without my glasses on, you do know this. So perhaps if I try to put some gold on either side of the pencil line or over the pencil line, then we can have a little bit sticking out. The worst thing that's going to happen is I go, I wish I hadn't done that. The best thing that will happen was, hmm, genius idea, Angela. So I don't know. What I do know is it's going to take me a little time to do, but not too long, because I, I really, I don't need it perfect. I just need it good enough, don't I? Don't I? Don't I? I really am slipping into valleys. I think it's because I'm engrossed in what I'm doing here and hoping, oh gosh, that's, a, that's an awful lot. But I think that's the best way to do it in some ways. We'll be fine now. Let's just spread the last of that little bit out and just get... Right up to the edges, like so. so. Don't mind it spreading out a little bit beyond there. Okay, we need a little bit more up this side, I think. More around the bottom. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well with this. Well, I've got it out. How's that doing? I think that'll work. The other thing I'm going to do while I've got this out is I'm going to use it around the edges. And if I get, if I, if it spills over onto the page, I'm okay with that. You know, it's today it's an experiment, it's good enough. And you know, everything that you create is good enough. It might not be your best, but it's good enough. And today I'm just, I am experimenting with this with you and hopefully giving you ideas it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy all these things I'm using I don't necessarily advocate that but there are ways of doing similar things with what you may have in your stash you may have some um, metallic acrylic paints or similar or you may have um, you know something else you could use you may not have distress inks but you may have another ink or alcohol markers you can use to edge paper because they work pretty well I've used those 
especially to disguise white paper on the edge of um, paper you've cut out or you know you want to layer up. So let's have a look there. How's that looking? Yeah, I think that'll work. So what I need to do now is I am going to just work out where roughly where everything is. So if I make that there, I'll go be a little bit beyond. And then we can adhere this. I'm going to try and line the edges of this paper that I, you know, the damasked paper up with the edge of the sheet here. But then if I turn over, I should be able to, I'm just going to dry the glue up a bit. Just snip these off with my scissors. There we go. Get rid of those little pieces because I won't need those again. And then I've got enough, I think, gold on my finger if I rub enough. Perhaps closer up to the tip of my finger just to add gold there. And I think that looks okay. Maybe not be perfect, you know. I'm going to have to think now about my stash of digital papers and so on, whether I continue with these or whether I go with something else. I'm just going to get a ooh, baby wipe so I can clean my finger up and have a bit of a clean up of my workspace as well because I've got little bits of gold everywhere and stuff so we don't want anything more than necessary Oop, as I nearly knock some um, a, a mug of what's left of my morning tea over didn't knock it over just knocked it backwards thank goodness I'm puzzled now as to what on earth I've done with those tweezers they've got to be here somewhere they'll turn up they always do so look at that magically got some under my nail but I can clean that up properly later there's all the, all that gold's gone which is lovely there so I've got this so now I need to think about what am I going to do with this I'm just going to flip that over so the damp side is down okay so now what am I going to do? I've got a mossy green pen here. I've still got the pens out from the, the set of Arteza fine liners that I used the other day. The sort of like um, grey blue, this sort of like tomato-y colour, the, the green and the brown. And I think that it's probably the green and the brown will actually be quite a good fit with this. And the red would make quite a nice highlight. Um, I know from past experience that the Paper Artsy paints these, these um, acrylic paints I used for this section you can draw on them quite happily glasses so let's have a think how am I going to approach this I do have plenty of options don't I because I could do something I don't want to do something similar to what I've done before but I do rather like this is another page this kind of thing um, or sometimes this. So, oh, let me have a look. Move it up, like these. These I know I did with um, the Zig pens, so they don't move with water. That might be an option. But I also quite like, just move these a moment, where I've used water to bleach some of the pattern out and distress it which I've done with, not that one, because that one I drew with the zigs, which I've done with this one, this one, and here. So I quite like that. It goes with the background. It also bleach out some of the distressing. Oh, whoosh, as everything falls off where I put it. Nay no worries, nay no worries. So, now I'm not sure whether this will work on the um, treasure gold. The only way to find out is to see. I've got something stuck in there. So what do I want to do? I said I do like 
patterns that kind of go um, in this way. Perhaps I will just mirror this line here, perhaps a couple of times. And I'm so tempted to go straight to Diva Dance. You'll be fed up with seeing me draw Diva Dance though, won't you? So I think I'll do a, a pattern called Fleavy. I think it's Fleavy. And on these lines, you put little groups of little leaves that are like flux. So if I zoom in, there we go. You can see what I'm doing, hopefully. So I've drawn two lines there and then on this one, I'm just going to put some little teardrop shaped leaves and then perhaps a couple up here. My, the first time I draw them, I always think, oh, they look cute. And then when I start to put more lines in, I think I should have drawn them bigger or longer. But then you come back and you aura some lines. And then you decide whether you want to add, I might add a couple more of these. Groups of leaves here and perhaps some. Um, on the end like that. And then you just draw these lines in. And if they fall, if you need to draw them, you know, like this one here, there'll be a little bit of the line there, a little bit there and here. That's exactly what you do and you just keep going. And I think it's such a simple and yet such a beautiful kind of pattern. So again, I'm going to just add perhaps a couple more leaves there and just carry on ordering the lines. And there'll come a point where you draw above the collections of leaves and they become like here sort of like embedded in part of this ribbon pattern. And I am going to do a line here that doesn't have any leaves on because then I can start to add some leaves perhaps in slightly different places to where the first ones were, not exactly the same. And you can add as many or as few of these as you like. And I'm absolutely positive you can actually put whatever shape you like here. You could use like um, crescent moons and do the same kind of thing. Or, you know, the more traditional shaped leaves or sprigs of leaves or anything else that you can think of that you might like to pop here. And you just keep going until you think you've got a wide enough band. I do have a particular fondness for organic patterns like this. I said they're so simple and so elegant. So I'll add some leaves there. We're a bit, you know, short on foliage up there. And perhaps I'm just going to pop a couple here. So let's go back to adding these lines in. There, I missed that one, so I can just go back and tuck the lines in. And um, perhaps here, and just follow this through. And then I think I might leave them just as they are there. The one thing I do want to do, though, is I am going to add just a little bit of ink at the bottom of each of these, because I'm going to use a damp brush to spread this ink out a little bit, just to fill the leaf shapes in so they look that little bit more sep separate from the background, I suppose. Um, they could be like the stems of the leaves or, you know, a trunk of a tree or some, some kind of plant, plant stem. But I do like this. 
It's funny, when I first saw it, I went, yeah. But over time, it sort of comes in and... Oh, God, these little tops that go on the top of these pens are pains. I haven't got any water to hand, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of water on my um, desk here, because that'll be fine. I've got quite a big brush, that's that'll be fine. And then I'm just going to use that tiny bit of water that's on there just to help to spread some of this ink into the leaves. I love it when pens like this are so versatile that you can use them solid or they become almost like a watercolour medium as well. And these ones really do move well with water. Some others aren't quite so motile, would be the phrase, I think, movable. Not sure motile applies, but it's what came to my head, so soluble perhaps would be a better word because we're dissolving the dyes in the ink or dissolving the ink the tiniest amount of water and it um, kind of works but as I've chosen this particular green because it does work well with the background I think Okay, I've got some kitchen towel here. So we just clean my brush and then I will just dab that up so I don't have any accidents with it. So we've got that one there. So that looks, that's starting to look quite nice. I will just zoom back out again. And if I move it so you can see the light, the shine. So we've got quite a bit of contrast. We've got the very matte green here of the um, Arteza. There's, there's some shimmer on the next layer, the matte there and so on. So it's quite interesting. There's lots going on. Okay, I want to do this Fleavy on this side because um, I can get a bit symmetrical about things. I do like symmetry. It may not be exactly the same though, but we'll see. So let's get some leaves in here. Like so. I don't know why everything went all a bit wobbly there, but it is what it is. And perhaps I'll add a second line in. So I did make these leaves a lot bigger here than on the bottom row. Um, I don't know why. So let's get some leaves in. Perhaps a couple just on the edge there. This is where the lines are going to start going behind the first set of leaves or even on top of them. It's quite a big gap there. I'm going to put some in there as well. That'll be fine. My lines overlap in the leaves, I'm not too worried because I know I'm going to be going back with water and um, some ink to fill these leaves in just to help to bring them out that little bit, as it were. So I'm going to add that there and then add some leaves there, perhaps some here, and maybe some just here. 
and then just add some lines just to finish this off because I think that'll be enough on this side as well. go. So all it takes now is for me just to add some more ink at the bottom of each of these leaves and spread that ink out and we'll see what this looks like then and make a decision from there as to what I do next. So did it again I put the lid on the top of this and I can't get it off done it okay a little squirty squirt of some water again and some water in my brush and let's just spread this out that little bit and if some of the outlines of the leaves disappear I'm fine with that as well because it is what it is. I'm using water with ink that will dissolve in it. And this, in comparison to other parts, perhaps, it looks a bit... Um, I think if I did this in black, it would stand out way more than I would like it to. It becomes more of the um, focal point. So by using colour... And I'm going to, once this is dried, I am going to splatter water on this and lift it up with a um, piece of kitchen towel, paper roll, paper towel. Um, you could use a cloth if you wanted to, you know. Um, then I know that I will soften that these even more and they'll go back into... Um, oh, that, that one I just did and I've just smudged it oh. that one at the bottom is nice and dry so what I'll do is I will just see if I can splatter some water on here and you can see what I mean then I'm not going to use my spray bottle because that just delivers way too much water but if I use my brush here I've got some control over it and I'm going to do it up on this one as well even though they're still a bit damp it's fine they're not soaking wet so and I'm letting the water sit just for a little while so that it dissolves a fair amount of the ink okie doke so That'll be fine I should pick that up and then just put this on press it down so it picks up you can see how much ink it picks up but don't forget there's also distress ink in the background and at the bottom here we can pick that up and you can see how it's all broken and bleached out and I like that I do like that look I think it might be a bit better I've just turned the light on on my camera I forgot to do that all of a dither all of a dither so that's quite nice and what I think I'd like to do for the next sections is I want to do something that involves this brown pen because I think that will pick up the browner tones of the gold and you can see I've put the light on you can you can see how much that gold shimmers as well so one of my favorite patterns at the moment that I've used a fair number of times is Tripoli um, but I've, I've also got this thing with the kind of Rebecca Blair kind of patterns the very straight lines and geometrics but I think a band of Tripoli underneath this might be nice so I'm going to pop in a pencil guideline for me top and bottom like so and I'm going to put a guideline next to these leaves and Tripoli is a pattern that I'm going to draw freehand 
even though it's quite geometrical. But there is a trick to doing this. Now, I, I'm sure I picked this up from the people at Zentangle, but I could be wrong. So I'm going to start by drawing a triangle. And this triangle needs to, well, it actually doesn't matter if they get a bit wonky or a bit strange because it all it works out no matter what. And I quite like the warping of the sizes and shapes of the triangles. So you draw a triangle, then you choose one side and you draw another triangle there. Then we go to the next one and another one. That one's going off the side, that one's going there, and I've only got five there. Normally you'd have six in a circle because, you know, that's how, you know, it's this kind of a hexagonal pattern it creates. Now I've misstroked here, I haven't drawn this as long as this one, but it'll be fine because I'm going to go round this way. Oops, see? <laughs> I need you to get a tiny thin one in there. But it always works out. So I managed to fill that space in there with a triangle. This one with a triangle. This one with a triangle. We'll have one in there. And then hopefully it's going to go all a bit skew with. But I'm just going to keep going and not worry too much about this. Um, it's not my... It's not a pattern I've achieved a level of great perfection with, but, and I can lose the plot as I'm doing it. I can forget what I'm doing quite easily and get confused by it. But what I try to do is to remember the, the dot. As I added this one, I started to create a circle of triangles here. So I'm trying to draw circles around this central dot and I would ideally like six of them. But if I don't get six of them, I am not going to stress about them. So if I start with this one, this here becomes my central dot. My central point is here. So I'm going to draw more there. And I've only got five triangles there. And I've got some very small ones here, but I'm fine with all of this. So... Let's have a look. So I need another one there. My central point is here and I'm only going to get one there. Okay, so let's do it up here. That's that's the point I'm going to orbit around, as it were. Which I've done. Here, and it's this point I'm going to kind of orbit around. Like so. Here is another orbital point, and we'll get there. It's very strange because it warps and morphs itself, but you just have to trust and not get too stressed if things seem to be going all a bit weird, which they're going to do, I'm afraid, because that is the nature of this pattern. So, <laughs> But that is why I rather like it. It ends up looking like, um, almost like, um, oh, what do you call them, like crystals or the conglomerates in a, in a, in a sedimentary rock. Breccia, something like breccia, which has um, sharp pieces of stone that form it. It's sort of like glued together. Or, you know, crystals in um, igneous rocks a bit. But, um, yeah, I like geology as well. The world of rocks, thin rock slices and a polarising microscope was one of the most amazing things I remember seeing for the first time. Well, I've seen many amazing things for the first time. But in university, that was wow. And that's all I wanted to do as far as geology was concerned. I wasn't interested in field trips and hacking off bits of rock. But I just wanted to look at these beautiful microscope um, images of rocks and all the parts that make them up. And even a microfossil. I found a microfossil in a rock that they didn't think there were any fossils in. So I was really chuffed with that. But you had to draw what you see as you saw as well. And under polarised light, 
And polarised light is the same kind of light. If you look through Polaroid sunglasses, it filters out light that vibrates in one direction. And But with crystals under polarised light, cross-polarised lights in a microscope, they show up all these amazing colours. And as you turn the slide, you get the colours sort of like wink in and out of existence or change. It's, at, it's like a kaleidoscope, but it's more mesmerising. And you can use the colours and the angles at which they change colour or they become invisible to actually identify the minerals that the rock is made up of. And um, again, that was something that was very fascinating. So, so this reminds me of that a bit. Oh, it's all gone a bit wonky here, but it'll all sort itself out. And I said, it's all fine and good. And everything is okay here. It's all working as I, I'm happy for it to work, as it were. And I've nearly done this particular row. So I've got that there, which is quite nice. And again, this I'll zoom out. This this brownie colour does pick up those golden tones just a bit. So that'll be nice. And again, with this one, I do want to um, add water to it. But what I think I'll do with this one is I'll cover this up mostly, hopefully, and give this a quick spray and then quick, quick, quickly pick up what I've got there. That has really bleached it right out. But it's, it's a ghost pattern there. That's why I don't like using that spray bot bottle in some ways. It, it takes puts too much water down, but you can see the ghosting. And I quite like that here. Um, at the bottom, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do here. I may want to come back with just a bit more distress ink once it's dry just to replace the distress ink but I think that's okay. Here I think in this section I might do something a little bit different. I use Tripoli down there and here I think I might use triangles but use them in a different kind of way. So I'm popping them in like this to create that a border of them. But I'm not going to put a border around them. Because I will erase the pencil line eventually when I can find an eraser. There's not one on my desk. So again, I've put it somewhere. But at this point in time, I don't know where that somewhere is. I got a bit carried away there. I was trying to draw a triangle that was pointing in the same direction as the previous one. Sometimes it's the simplest patterns that can be the most effective. These I'm putting in really as almost like a background texture. I want them to be there. I want this to feel like I've added to it, hopefully added some value or some interest to it. But what I want to shine is the quote. And I'm not entirely sure it does because that paper really doesn't stand out much. But I may be able to do something about that. You never know. I may just redo the quote and, and adhere it over the top. Now then... I do want to do something with these, but I don't know what. I think what I might do is just pop a couple of lines at the wider end of each triangle. So I'll start by going along this side. Because going up and down, up and down is 
bit dizzy making, isn't it? Well, I think so. Whereas if I go this way, I can perhaps be a bit more consistent about the, the positioning of these lines and how wide apart they are, how far apart they are. Again, just get that. That adds that feeling of a ribbon. It joins them together, yet there's no lines joining the triangles together. OK, so I'm just going to take this off to one side. I'm going to give this a spray from a distance so that hopefully I won't get quite so much water on it. I'm not going to hold my breath on that one, mind you. But I am going to just take this and just dab some of this up. Actually, I could have done with a bit more um, water sprayed on there, perhaps. That might do a bit better. From a distance is a bit better. I do have to say that. And of course, the dampness on the paper towel might pick a bit more up as I go along. It certainly is with the, um, the Fleavy, I think. So there we are. So I now have, this is so smooth where I've put the gold. So I've now got those subtle, subtle little sections. And I think the very last thing I'm going to do is I have got this, my green here. And I do remember, I do remember, I do be do be do, remember what colour I'd used. Right. There we go. I've got a piece of paper here. All right. Yeah. So I was, <laughs> the writing there is um, it's well in Welsh, but it's Welsh from um, the very early part of the last century, which is a bit different to modern Welsh. It's from a grave that I um, saw on my trip of a bard and um, ooh, that was not the green I wanted at all but you know what I can do let's just use some water just to pick some more of that up it also picks some more of that um, border up there We're a bit damp now that's because this was just a bit on the mucky side so let's give it a clean Sorry for the squeaks. And then give the top of this just a bit of a wash. That's better. And let's see if that will work a bit better. I think so. This is Shabby Shutters, which is a sort of like yellowish green. And I think that will just tone that down a bit. adds that colour back in. And maybe, maybe, maybe just a hint of peeled paint around the edges just to darken those back up a bit. And I think, I think, oh gosh, what if I managed to get that stuck to? I don't know. We can go out now. I think I'm going to call this dundit. What do you think? The one thing that I'm not all that happy about is this green here is a bit too blue. I wanted to, perhaps I should have gone with something that was a bit more yellowy green. Um, but it is what it is and it does tie in. Perhaps if I'd used a more bluey green here, it would have been something that would have tied in. Um, can't really do anything to it at the moment or in any way. I may think about that. But another way to use tang tangle patterns and simple patterns and just finding my way through all of this and what I want to do. So thank you for joining me. I hope you all give something like this a go. Look at the way that catches the light. If I cut the light off from the window. 
How rich and beautiful is that? It's rather lovely, isn't it? And actually, when it's, the light's catching it, that dark green sinks right to the background, doesn't it? It's almost like there's a hole underneath it. That might be because the, the <laughs> this I'm working on is of a similar kind of colour, I guess. But, yeah, do you know, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with it exactly as it is. I think the only thing I might add would be some drops. Actually, I'll do that now. If I forget, oh, I would if I knew what I'd done with, can't see them. I've put my metallic paint somewhere and I can't see where I've put them. I had them out yesterday. I'm sure I put them back. Oh, there they are. I did put them back. They were underneath something though. So let's just do some splatters of metallic paint here and I'm done then. I've got this so I'll put some water on the gold. I've got a paintbrush. Oh, this is quite a small paintbrush but it'll be fine. So I'm just trying to get some little gold spatters going on. And when they dry, we'll have a kind of random pattern there. Who'd have thought I'd be doing paint spatters? It's not usually me. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm going with it. It's all part and parcel of experimenting and just giving it a go. So that is, that is done. That's done. I'm happy with that. That's okay. Um, oh gosh, bang crash wallop. Let me just give my um, brush a little clean out, like so. And then use this just to clean the splatters up and everything. There we go. My brush pot. And there we have some little gold drips and you know bits and bobs you can see how quickly it dries at the bottom it's they've already soaked into the paper and this one will as well very soon so thank you for joining me and thank you for bearing with me as I'm trying new things out and as I say I do it because I hope that it will inspire you and perhaps encourage you to try different things and to discover what works for you and um, I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed doing this with you. And um, my, my goal is to find my confidence in hand lettering so I can do this without printing it from a computer. That's my aim and goal, I think. Um, and so there we go. So look after yourselves, take care of yourselves and find time to be creative. Thank you so much once again. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Hoyle.